My name is Joe, and I'm a volunteer. And, um, you know, I think I can speak for many people. We remain nameless. It's real simple. I mean, I think all the volunteers are motivated simply to help these people and to reach out to them and, you know, let them know that they're not alone. And that, you know, there's a community of folks behind them that want to help in any possible way. Yeah, when we heard about uh, what was going on in Cookville with the tornado damage, um, we have the skill set and the machinery uh, to be able to come up and, and help clear some of the larger debris. And we're so close, I mean, it was just easier for us to load everything up and drive, you know, and drive down the interstate to, to get involved with everyone. And something we wanted to do with it being so close by. And it's, you know, we know tons of people in Cookville and it just seemed like something we could try to help with. Uh, basically, my family's company and another uh, landscaping company in Crossville paired together and found a local church where we could volunteer our time. So uh, we brought all of our heavy machinery up to Cookville with us. Um, we have four or five skidsters with us, a mini excavator and some different attachments. So uh, I'm a resident here at Echo Valley Drive uh, subdivision. I live at the end of the road, and if you, it, it's, a, it's a dead end road, and there's a cul-de-sac at the end. So if you go down, you can see where it dips down. That area was not in the path. Uh, the entrance to our subdivision is where the, the tornado hit. We got the warning and within seconds it was on us. We knew, we all knew that we were, we were being hit by a tornado. Uh, when, we, when it got quiet, uh, at the end of my road, we stepped out of our doors with flashlights and we just hollered, are you okay? Yes, we're okay, we're okay. And we saw debris and we thought, okay, we're all fine. And that's when we heard the cries and the yells at the top of our road. Uh, we immediately, everybody came up here with flashlights, whatever they could find, and what, we couldn't even process what we were seeing. The road was gone, debris everywhere, we couldn't get our bearings. All we knew is that the homes that were once up here were gone. Uh, and immediately people started digging for, for neighbors. And miraculously, everyone right here survived, but their stories are unbelievable. Uh, when you hear a story of a family that, that knew their home was going to disintegrate and then they rode it out in their van and the minivan is now on top of the rubble that was their home. Uh, another family where uh, mother, son and other family members managed to get down to the main floor. They felt their house move and the next thing they know they're across the street over by Echo Valley Mart on top of the section of floor they were on and the rest of the house is gone. Uh, this gentleman here, David, his house picked up, moved forward impaled itself on a tree and that's the only thing that kept that house from disintegrating. He said we got the got the alarm on the phone and, uh, when it hit the whole house started shaking I got into that interior hallway there by the uh, bathroom door the washer and dryer is and just rode it out. It the house picked up moved about 60 feet you know this way towards the road front. And, uh, After it was over with, I uh, managed to crawl out of here and try to check on the neighbors. Of course, they were screaming at me, you want to know if I was okay and stuff. So. I was following the storm on the news, and then when it got here, I'd already kind of planned to kind of get in the interior room there in the bathroom or uh, interior part of the house to, you know. Once the house started shaking, that, that sure was where I was at. But, Oh, it threw me around the hallway quite a bit. Yeah. It felt more like, a, more like an earthquake or something. The whole house is just shaking. Three blocks over is <laughs> Gordon. <laughs> We're out here today with a lot of great volunteers. From Samaritan's Purse was an organized group and they're working on the tornado relief here in Putnam County. Uh, we have Zach Cochran who's from Dayton, Tennessee. And Zach, tell me about you and who are some of the folks with you? Yeah, awesome. So um, the group here right here, not everybody here, but some of us are from New Union Baptist Church in Dayton. Uh, you know, we just came down here. Uh, we heard that they needed some help. Uh, we want to come out here and love on these guys. You know, we love because Christ first loved us, and we just want to spread the message that there is hope, do some manual labor, and be able to share the gospel with some of these people, uh, and give them hope in this really tragic time in their life. So that's why we're out here. What have you been doing today? Yeah, so we've been uh, clearing, clearing brush, moving a lot of wood, some manual labor, 
uh, got to talk to some people and kind of instill that kind of hope, have some good um, conversation about what Christ has done for us and why we're out here doing what we do, uh, because we want to share that message that, you know, just because there's there's tragedy in someone's life, you know, Christ has made a way uh, back to God through through his, his work on the cross, and it, it's, it's been really awesome coming out here and volunteering. So tell me, Samaritan's Purse, you're new, uh, helping with that, that, that organization. How important is it to be organized? It's super important. So uh, I'm pretty sure they weren't taking volunteers for the past two days. So we had to come in and do this whole, you know, uh, orientation. And I can just imagine the mass chaos if people were just coming from all over the country just doing their own thing. So it's been really good to actually have some some set, hey, you're going here, you're going here, and some, some left and right limits uh, for them to come in and put that together. I cannot express the gratitude. I, I know everyone is so grateful for all of the volunteers who, who want to help. This is so different from what happened Wednesday. Abundant heart, a lot of people, but too many people. It was a little chaotic and stressful for the residents. We couldn't get in and out of our homes. We couldn't, this is a dead end road. We couldn't get back to our homes. What I'm, so we're seeing now uh, is, is uh, teams uh, they're, they're wearing shirts so we know who they are, they're wearing armbands, they have team leaders, it's very organized and a lot is getting done and we are extremely grateful. And What I would encourage people to do is a week, two weeks, two months from now, keep checking in because the, the work is daunting and it's, it's going to take a long time.